Hey guys, how's it going today? I'm just going to post the agenda. Uh, it should be in the group about this video for you guys. So I hope you guys are all having an awesome day. I'm out of breath because I was just full sprint um, going to fill my water bottle. Yeah, embarrassing. I know, right? But hey, that's life. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> so we're going to get started pretty shortly here. A couple of things I just wanted to ask you guys about was if anyone had any questions from the last lesson. Um, what we're going to be going through today, uh, really quickly, just so you guys can see this, if you guys don't have access to that, um, the agenda, it's going to be the types of products that we want to sell. Kind of and when I talk about that, I mean, conceptually, are we talking needs, wants, things like that. Um, understanding global trends, breaking down countries, niches. That's going to be a pretty quick conversation. I think you guys are going to be um, shocked at how simple that can actually be. Choosing winning products within that emerging market. And then I've got some homework for you guys and then some closing notes. So I'll let you guys comment any questions that you guys have. Um, let me know how you guys are doing today. I love interaction, okay? Um, it's weird filming videos like this in front of nobody. So when no one's interacting with you, it makes these more challenging. <laughs> Just so you guys are aware. But I, I'm, I, uh, yeah, I don't think I have to say anything else there. Um, from the feedback I got so far from you guys, it seems like you guys are really enjoying this and, and getting a lot of value out of this. Um, but yeah, any questions that you guys had? So let's jump right into this. Um, types of products to sell. Now, what do I even mean by this? Now, types of products to sell, I mean, are kind of along the lines of, of everyone has their different mindset or a guru's always telling you something different. Like, should you sell a need or a want or what service are you satisfying? And, and the list just goes on and it's honestly crazy. Okay. And I, think it should be a lot more simple than that. I don't, I don't think that that's the right way to look at this. I think that the right way to look at this is essentially there's two different product types that you should sell. This is going to sound really, really simple if you want to succeed. Retail is a whole nother ball game. I'm not going to say that it's not. Um, it's, it's not. It's not the same. Retail is a different world because there's impulse shopping and all sorts of things. Okay, But we're driving ads, generally speaking, to our products or we're drop shipping on another third party website, that kind of thing. So what do I sell? I sell two things. I sell either needs, they're, they're more wants than anything, but a necessity, something that actually improves someone's lifestyle. I'm not talking air, water, shelter. I'm talking about a need is in something that improves someone's lifestyle. So what's an idea of that? What's going to improve someone's lifestyle? Now, the very first product that I sold that we did $3.1 million in sales with was a tornado shaker. Okay, It was a uh, it was a shaker cup that essentially blended your products, your supplements for you, made your life a little bit easier. Is that really like improving their lifestyle dramatically no but it it was helping it making it a little easier but the side of the the realm that that product existed on was it was a product that has the ability to go viral okay that's the other style of product so you've got two things in there maybe you sell a protective sheet for the leather in the back of your car for your dog i sell that that's a need it's not necessarily something that's you know viral it can be because there's dogs in it, but that's providing them with a service or are satisfying a problem that they might have. So that, that's that one spectrum. The other spectrum is like selling something along the lines of, if you guys have seen that, that and I like the animal niche for this, if you guys have seen that new product that when you're away videotapes your dogs and drops some treats and things like that, that's a product that goes viral. The ads are awesome. The product's awesome. And everyone wants to tag their friends in that. So you know it's a viral product when you see the comments and the comments are just Jarrett Bellavo tagged blank. Jarrett Bellavo tagged blank, blank, tag blank. That's when you're like, wow, I have a viral product. Those are products that do really, really well online. At the end of the day, they both do great, okay? The other products out there in the world, definitely, yes, there's, there's money to be made in them. They do great, but they're very challenging to market. So you have to understand that. Maybe someone like me can get away with it. You guys are going to have a very tough time with that. So don't listen to what anyone says about that that's not a good product because this, that. If you can break it down into one of those two categories, you have something. And I'm going to give you guys tons of examples here. So don't you worry. Um, let's check some comments here. Um, hey, Jared. Uh, I made it to the live. Awesome. Good morning. Good morning. It's, uh, it's 4.35 p.m. where I am right now. Um, I can only imagine some of the times from you guys. Hey, how's it going? Comments from viewer. I have no idea who it is. The system is brutal and broken. It doesn't tell me who's actually commenting. Um, what about POD? So POD, for those of you that don't know, is print on demand. 
yes, definitely. You can create those viral style products with print on demand, right? You're not really serving a need. Yes, technically it's clothing. They need clothing, blah, 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 blah. But no, if you can provide print on demand products, doesn't have to be clothing necessarily, print on demand products that can go viral. That's awesome. We're going to jump into that. So you guys get a lot of examples because I understand there's probably some complexity issues with this. You don't fully understand to what extent I mean by what. So we'll jump into this and I'll show you some products that are top sellers on hacking winners that I actually might not think are better, good products to market. Okay. Um, one thing really quickly while we're all in here. Now I know I, I ask for a little bit sometimes. Uh, one thing I would really love if we all did is if we all maybe liked this video, that'd be amazing. The reason is I made the group public just for 24 hours so that people could see these videos just for a short period of time, see what they're missing out on. So if you guys want to give it a like or a comment, that's amazing because that basically shows other people the video, tells Facebook, hey, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. Then Facebook goes, wow, thanks, Jarrett, for showing us that you know what you're talking about. We're going to help other people see your video. So that's kind of the spiel on it. I really appreciate that. Um, you guys, is he packing going away in the U.S.? No, 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 no. I don't know where you heard that. It is not going away. Um, if it is, that is absolute news to me, unless there's a way better system coming out, but no, you pack, it's probably not going anywhere for five, 10 years. Um, yeah. Wow. Netherlands. Jeez. I really want to go there though. I do. I do. But, uh, thank you for attending Jordy. I appreciate that. Um, so that, that being said, let's, let's kind of chat really quickly about understanding global trends. Now this conversation could be a five hour conversation if we didn't have a platform like hacking winners with us. Okay. It could be because. At the end of the day, I don't know what, what products are going to be popular in Poland and Switzerland and Israel. That's tough for me to understand, okay? But one thing that I do want to understand about global trends is this is, this is where I limit my conversation about this. I limit my conversation with, is it something I actually understand, okay? Because I'm going to be able to show you products that sell well in that country. We were looking at them yesterday. We could find products that do well in other countries. So... Do I actually understand the market? I have to say that to myself. Okay, Cosmetics is a tremendous example. I know I used this one yesterday, um, but their cosmetics in, in India, for example, are primarily used to lighten skin tone, right? So I don't understand the cosmetic niche. I don't even understand the cosmetic niche here. So why would I want to sell something in that cosmetic niche overseas? I'm setting myself up for failure. Even if I get temporary success, I'll never be able to scale it because I don't truly understand what I'm doing. So. I always try to say along the lines of, if you're not sure what kind of things you should sell, maybe try selling things that you'd be a consumer for. That's going to make it a lot easier for you because now things make more sense, right? That's why I started in the fitness industry. Yes, at one point in time, you guys, I was in shape. I know, it's crazy to think. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, let's prevent all those comments from you guys going off there. But no, there was at one point in time, fitness was my world, right? It's still a part and part, but I'm Clearly not in, in the shape that I was. So I was in the fitness industry. I knew everything that was going on. I knew all the big names in the industry. I knew exactly what people would want, what upsells they'd want, what cross sells they'd want, what kind of content they'd want me to email them, workout plans, workout regimes, the, the celebrities big in the space. I understood it because I was in it. So now when I'm selling there, I could scale to 23 countries around the world with one product. We only have one product in our store. We did millions in sales, four variants of it, colors, one product. Think about that. You need to understand these markets that you're selling in. Okay, that's, that's the biggest thing when I talk niches. I'll be able to show you what niches exist where, but should you enter that niche is what that, that this should actually say. It should say, should you enter those niches that Jared's about to show you? Okay, so that we're on the same page. Um, breaking down country niches, that, that same kind of concept. I'm not going to... I went on a tangent and covered this too. So we're not going to get into that too, too much. Um, but let's jump into the bread and the butter. Um, right into it. Choosing winning products in emerging markets. So we chatted the other day um, about our lists. Did you guys do this? Did you guys go on Hacking Winners and look at countries? I wanted you guys to find your own countries. Please let me know in the comments. Did you guys do that? If you didn't, please do it. Um, yes, you can cheat all this stuff and skip all this stuff. But again, it's, it's to an extent, it's, it's laziness, right? And laziness isn't going to get you further because if you don't have a way of obtaining these metrics yourself, this isn't going to go as far with you. So please comment. Let me know if you guys did that. If you guys went in there and you guys found some countries, um, the countries that I found that were awesome. And, and again, there's, there's obviously a couple more in here, but when we did this together, I found Russia, Israel, Poland, France, Netherlands, UK, Turkey, Spain, India, 
Those were the ones I found. Did you find any outside of that? Let me know because that's become very powerful for me, you guys, is, is being able to look at these countries and understand that there's niches within these countries that I probably know a lot about. You probably know a lot about without really thinking about too hard, okay? So make sure that you guys are always doing this. Don't just listen to what someone has to say. Don't just show up to these lives or look at any of my other training and go, he knows what he's talking about, I'm just gonna replicate it. That's great for temporary success. Those are the people that are temporary. The people in this space that strive are those that reason and they, they watch a video and they understand where the person's coming from, why they're telling them the information and how they can find the information themselves. Whenever I watch a video and I'm like, whoa, didn't know you could do that. I'm like, how did he figure out that he could do that? How can I figure out then to not go to his videos and learn for myself? Because now I'm going to find out new knowledge and pieces of things that he didn't know about, right? That's the biggest portion of this, you guys. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through the uh, comments here really quickly. I found the same ones with our, um, RF and Netherlands standing out the most. Yeah, absolutely. Depends on the, what kind of product selections you're looking at. Those are great countries without a doubt. Um, Cambodia. Yeah. Cambodia is a tough one. Um, there's again, there's a huge income gap. Cambodia just had a massive, well, not massive or not, sorry. Whoa, whoa. Wrong word to say not. Not recently, I guess, but in 75 or 76, I think it is. Might even be the 90s. Ah, if it's 90s, that's pretty recent. Um, they had a major uh, genocide. So they basically um, outed all of the very smart people, anyone who had a degree, things like that. So Cambodia is definitely um, a market because there's a huge income gap, right? But they're very, very struck by poverty. Um, the problem is with places like that is we call them young markets. So there's actually a filter going up in Hacking Winners that's specific about young markets. Young markets are still at such an early stage. They're developing. It's tough to isolate out who could be a consumer and who can't be a consumer based on income levels. Because to be quite frank, there's not really much international data on that that Facebook has access to. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah. Just keep that in mind, you guys. Um, so let, let's jump into this. Let's, let's go into Hacking Winners. Let's take a look at some products. And I want you guys to not only see my mindset, but understand my mindset. So as we do this, ask questions, okay? Ask questions, write comments. I'll come and check the comments periodically here. I'm going to move some of my messy desk around. I was, this was a reorganization day for me, just catching up on a lot of projects. So as I'm doing this, you guys, please, 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 please be flooding the comment box. Anything that you notice that stands out to you, okay? So let us jump into this. Now, I'm going to hop into Hacking Winners. Com. Um, I'm just going to sign in here again, full disclaimer, probably gonna be a little slower for me because um, I'm streaming on a couple devices. So this is, this is going to be amazing for you guys. So uh, I think that the way I mapped out the agenda, I hope that a lot of you guys walked into this going like, holy cow, I'm going to have to look at market trends and niches and all this jazz. Well, you don't. Okay. Cause if you did this homework, it actually becomes even simpler. We basically did this yesterday, but we didn't talk about my mindset. That's the only difference. Okay. So let's take a peek here. Now, um, I'm just going to clear my filters. I don't know if I have any on there, so I'm going to clear. So my list had Russia, Israel, Poland, France, Netherlands, UK, Turkey, Spain, India. Yeah? Um, that's good to know. I'm not going to go through all of these with you. I'm not going to bore us for hours doing this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to look at these. Now, the presets, there's going to be a, a couple new that are added over the next couple days that you guys are going to love. You guys can basically just avoid doing all this, but that was not the point. The point of this masterclass course, whatever you want to call it, was to actually get you guys to understand my insights, why I'm doing things. So let's start with a place like Russian Federation. This is, again, we've talked about a lot. This is a market that I love. Um, I'm just going to toss the slider up there, see if I get some relevant products. We're going to go from there, okay? Because I want to look at this, and, and there's a few reasons why. Maybe that's too high. Let's take a look here. Um, this might turn into a great example. So I see Maybe I could get some higher numbers here if I just lower this down to 10, right? So see that I was at 92, somewhere around that region. I want to just show you guys bomb products so that you guys can really understand my insights. Now, this product, it's clearly got some good sales. Um, you know, there's going to be tons of sales here. Russian Federation, OK, Spain, Serbia, Latvia, Lithuania, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's, let's open up the AliExpress listing so that I can see this a bit bigger because this is a great selling product right now. There's without a doubt, it's doing awesome in, in, in the prospective markets, right? It's doing awesome. Should I go and sell this product? Well, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to market that. 
I don't know much about this industry. Well, I actually, I do. This is full disclaimer. Um, one of my best consulting clients ever was in the quilting industry um, and embroidery industry. So I actually know a lot about this, but let's say that I don't. That's a very weird niche to come across. Let's say that I don't. So I wouldn't know how to sell this. Is, is this a product that supplies a, a need? I, 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 I don't think so. But you guys can tell me if you think it supplies a need. I doubt it. Um, is it a product that people are going to see and want to tag their friends in? So in other words, is it a product that can go viral? No, right? This is exactly what I'm saying when I'm talking about what types of products should we sell because absolutely this is a good selling product. 867 orders, it's doing awesome. Absolutely it is. But at the end of the day, uh, it's probably not a product that's going to do quite well for me because I don't know how to market it in the sense that I can make it go viral. Do you guys? Um, right? That's, that's the biggest thing. So realize that and understand what you guys are looking at when you guys are breaking down products because these are all great products, but if at the end of the day, you can't sell it, you can't sell it. Now, here's a good one. Here's an excellent example, okay? Um, Russian Federation, and, and, side note, Russia is going to have a lot of car-related products. They have um, accidents. They have a lot of fraudulent activity with vehicles. They have tons of things happen in Russia with, with vehicles, road rage. We've all seen the crazy videos. So that's why these things are. So now what's this? Okay, this is the, the second product when we look at last three-day trends um, that's popping up here. Okay, car safety, seatbelt, padding adjustment, blah, 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 blah. What is this? Um, interesting. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Very interesting. What is this all about? Um, this is a very, very interesting product. Now, I hope that you guys are thinking what I'm thinking, but again, I'm going to walk you through a bunch so you guys understand my mindset. I look at this product. Is it a need or a, or a need want, needish want kind of thing? Um, it definitely supplies a need, right? How does it not? If I'm a if I'm a younger kid and the strap is going over my shoulder or my head in a funny way, that's obviously not good because some people don't have that adjustable clip that can bring their 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 shoulder thing down, right? Okay, definitely has a need or want, but doesn't have a viral aspect because when I can find both of those, we really can hit a home run. So I'm like, does it? I'm like, yeah, because you know what? If I post something like this and I see it and I think my friend Tracy has a kid that's right around this size, I'm going to text her or I'm going to message her or I'm going to tag her in the post and be like, Tracy, is this something that you're looking for? Great. There is that virality aspect to it. This could be a very, very good product. Okay. Um, that's awesome to think about. Now, the, the whole bra underwear scene, you're going to see a lot of those. There's nothing we can do about it. It's going to happen. Um, it's just one of those things. Okay. Let's continue on this list because I like looking at these products, right? This one's got a thousand orders in the last 30 days. What's this all about? Let's, um, let's open this up. It's got a ton of sales, Russian, Slacky, Poland, you know, the usuals um, are popping up there. 12 piece log. What the heck is this about, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know what this is. But one thing that I noticed is it had a video, okay? So sometimes we'll see market exploits based on the fact that they have a video because, and, and I saw that, I'll show you guys. Um, right here, the word video. You could also scroll on the left-hand side and go to video and upload that and click that and you'll only get ones with videos. Sometimes you'll find products that have an amazing product video in them and that's going to allow you to find a marketable space for them because that, that marketing content that we use is the catalyst to get viral content going on the internet. That's, that's, what, that's what those marketing tools are for. Um, this, can, this, is, this is not going to load. Sometimes when I'm streaming like this, the internet just won't load these things. It doesn't even try to. So I'm going to give up on that. But that's something to look at when you guys are going through here. Maybe maybe that's why that product's doing great. But again, I, I, I'm not going to sell that. I don't have a store that already sells that. That would be an excellent upsell if you're in that space um, and you can provide that. But again, that's not for me, okay? Um, this is a, a pigment. Again, this is going to be a big, big thing when we look at some of these countries, right? You got to understand that. Now, this is a product that I, I wouldn't, not sell i would sell something like this this is absolutely because it's very clear what it is the market's there i can look at my countries because yes i don't fully understand it i'm not going to say that i fully understand this but i'm also a marketer and i understand that while it's being sold in these countries there's obviously a need for it okay so we can add that product up and we can sell it there okay we're going to see tons of phone cases ah you can sell phone cases if you want i don't recommend it um very oversaturated niche okay so as I scroll through these, I'm being very, very dissective of every product, right? Because I, at the end of the day, I have access to million now, million plus products, okay? 
when I'm doing this, the actual speed that I'm doing this, so you're aware, is something like this. I'm going to speak really, really quick here. So I'm going to go, ah, no, not something that people would care about. Uh, maybe uh, I'm just going to open this up in a new tab, uh, continue on. And I'm just holding command as I did that. I'm like, no, don't know what that is. Uh, pigment, maybe I'll favorite that one. Uh, that, what? I don't know what that is. Uh, professional makeup kit, maybe, but probably not. Phone cases. Um, no idea what this is. Eyebrow makeup tool. If I had a store in the niche, I would. Oh, fitness. Yeah, definitely going to open this up. Um, go to AliExpress, close, continue on. Yeah, Bluetooth stick and open this up. Might be too saturated. Uh, continuing on here. Uh, woman's makeup cosmetic bag. Definitely could be. I didn't think that one was that nice. Tough to get viral. Um, Dan Puller. Yeah, going to open this up for sure. That's usually a good one. So you guys can see that's literally the speed that I'm going through this. This is why I want you to understand my insights because when I'm going through this, you guys, it's going to allow me to find a lot more products quickly, right? I, that, that When you guys have these insights that I have and you guys learn this, you'll be able to do this at the speed that I'm doing it at. So um, I see a, a couple of comments here. Uh, there's a lot of flatline in the rest of the month. Yeah, that, that don't read into those too much. If it has the sales, it has the sales. Um, sometimes what we'll notice is like a drop shipper will order a bunch at one time. Maybe they're housing them in their house, things like that. But at the end of the day, if it has the orders and it's there and it's relevant and the system's seeing it, don't worry about those flat lines. It's not a really big deal. Um, and, and that wouldn't have been the month. That wouldn't have been a whole month data set. That would have just been what we were looking at. So it would have been like seven days probably. Um, uh, protect your kids gotta be, yeah, it's absolutely. It's a need, right? That's, that's a hundred percent. Um, are you allowed to use their video with their logo or can you change the logo to yours? So you can use their content. If they publish that content there, you can use it. You're allowed to. Um, that's, that's why they're posting it. They want more sales. You can, you can swap their logo out for yours. Definitely something you can do. Um, do I do it? If the logo is not infringing and it's fine, I, I usually leave it. Um, by that, I mean like if their logo is www.mysite.com, no, I take it out because I don't want them going to that website. But if their logo is just a regular logo and I'm fine with it, I have a dropship store, not a branded store. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'll leave it. Um, so that's kind of the spiel on that. But let me know if you have any other questions with that. So some of these products that I click. So we obviously talked about that one. Um, sports bag, running, waist bag, jogger, pocket, jogging, portable. Um, that's what this is. So what is this all about? Now let's take a peek here. Um, oh, it's a waist belt that you can put things in. Cool. Really cool concept. Okay. Okay. Uh, definitely something that I think is interesting. I think that there's some virality aspect to it, right? And that's that's a term that I use. I go, yeah, I could see that, but I got to come up with content for this without a doubt. Um, that's probably not the best content. Maybe it's fine, but I, I don't think that's like high quality enough. Do they have anything else, right? Whenever I, I think it might be a reasonable product, I'm actually going to scroll down a bit further. A lot of the times they have excellent cross sells and upsells here, guys. So you can use the same supplier as well. So it's all arriving in the same package. Um, there's like a little gold nugget for you guys. But take a look at these images. You guys might find really good images. This image is not bad, actually. I quite like this image. Um, can I zoom out enough to see it all? No. And it's massive. So it's going to be good quality, good resolution when you uh, make it a normal size. But there's definitely something to this. I, I definitely think it's a decent product. I would experiment with it, right? If I was doing the fitness space, which I'm not going to for this store. And the reason is too many people know about my success in the fitness space. So if I just do that, you guys are just going to be like, well, he's just doing this because he could do the fitness space. No, I want to challenge myself. I want to start up a store that I haven't done anything in that niche before. So that when you guys see something, it's like, how did he do that? Because I, I want to go against what I'm saying, selling something that I understand because that's a big advantage for me. I want to disadvantage myself so that you guys can see, wow, you can actually do this, okay? Um, so this selfie stick, okay, definitely, you know, 1,700 orders. Uh, it's cheap. Yeah, 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 I could use this. But again, are, are these oversaturated? I don't know. How can I, how can I really tell? I mean, it's still selling right now. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's oversaturated. If you're seeing it here, it's still selling. I can still sell this product. Um, where is this one selling? Let's find it again. Um, I can still sell this product. That, that's the biggest thing here. Russian Federation, Spain, Poland, Germany, China. Nope, Chile. Um, I was like, China, what? Um, it, it's still selling. Okay, so you guys can absolutely sell it. 
being oversaturated, it just means that your life cycle with that product might not last as long as something that's fairly, you know, recent and, and one of these new and upcoming products or high growth products or high margin products, right? Things like that. So understand that that's, that's a thing, right? Now, I'm going to go over on a side tangent here. And I'm going to talk to you guys about one of my, one of my good friends here, Google Trends. It's an underutilized resource to say the least, okay? Now, you can enter any search terms. This is, you know, our topics. And this is going to give you an idea of the relevancy of that. Now, the reason that I use this is to find out seasonality trends, okay? So let's put this word in here called fitness, right? Something that I know quite a bit about. Um, and I'm just going to put this to, let's say, the past five years. And I'm going to see, do I recognize anything weird about this trend? Huh? Ah. That's pretty weird. I see these, these spikes. I'm going to make sure I'm sharing my screen here. I, uh, I see these spikes. Huh. What's that all about? What time's that? December. 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 And they're going into January, right? What does that scream? New Year's resolution. Okay. We understand that because chances are, if you're watching this video, you're in a market that a New Year's resolution is probably a thing. Okay. Now, that's the trend within the U.S., okay? It's, I've got this as United States, but what if I change this and I put Russia? If I put Russia here, what's going to happen? Is it going to be the same? I don't know. Well, whoa, did anyone expect that? I certainly did not expect that, and I did not do this before this um, video. My uh, words are leaving my mouth. Before this video. So now I can see that when I sell a fitness product in Russia, there's not really that seasonal trend. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Eh, don't read into it too much. What it is, is it gives me an opportunity. When there is a trend, right now, my fitness stores are all doubling down, right? I've got like four or five more days of dramatic New Year's resolution fitness sales, okay? So when I talk about that, yeah, I'm going to sell that. And I'm going to push that a lot harder. But when I talk about Russia, well, maybe that, that just doesn't happen for me. I don't have to worry about it. There's a market there, absolutely. I'm not judging that if there's a market based off Google Trends. I'm judging if the product comes up here, if there's a market, there's a market. But there's no seasonality index. That's good to see. Um, what if we type in Spain, right? So let's, let's try to remember the curve there of that Russian one. Let's go to Spain. What's Spain got? Spain's got, whoa. I mean, there's defined spikes. Now, why is it? August, December. August, December. August, December. August, December. Do you guys see what I'm going here? So this is what we want to do when we're looking at our industry and our niche. So now I'm starting to look at products. I'm starting to get a better idea of it. I'm thinking about selling them everywhere, right? Um, this fitness product, where was it sold in here? Okay. Um, oh, this is the last month here. Um, maybe that's what I have it set to. Russia, Spain, Netherlands, Chile, United Kingdom, France. So look at this. So Spain, Russia's a flat market. There's no spikes there but there's a lot of sales. Spain, I'm going to want to recognize that, hey, it's, it's got some sales. It's definitely got some cyclicality to it. But when I get to those months, I want to double down. I want to remember this. I want to put it in my calendar and say, hey, August, increase your budget to Spain. Double it up, right? Double that up. Great. It's a trend, you guys. It's been going on for five years. It's a trend. Um, literally every single year for five years. So understand that there are still trends, you guys. And you need to realize that because when I look at something on Hacking Winners and all of a sudden it's got a thousand sales in the last two days and nothing before that, the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking at trends. I'm going to try and figure out, is there a cyclicality of this? Am I entering this when maybe the market's about to leave me? I don't know, right? So let me just check out these comments really quickly here. Um, do you check to see if those products are trademark knockoffs before you phone? I never, ever, 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 ever sell anything that's a trademark knockoff. Um, and it's just not good business practice, right? you're not setting yourself up for success. You're kind of cheating the system and that usually doesn't pan out well for people. Uh, Short-term gain, long-term failure, right? If, if and, and again, you don't really have to notice that too, too much. Like when we're on Hacking Winners, generally speaking, I don't think I've actually seen a product up there that's a trademark knockoff kind of concept. Um, they never get that big, right? It's someone exploiting them and then they get sued and they lose their money or something happens, right? So I personally can honestly say the more I think about this, I haven't seen a trademark knockoff even make it tie up on black hacking winners. So I don't worry about it. Do you avoid electrical products? Not, not necessarily. Um, you know, maybe if I'm selling to Israel, yeah. Right. Just Cause I don't know their laws on importing, but no, generally speaking, electronics are good. 
Um, that category is there because you can actually isolate to sell electronic products. They're usually pretty good. They're usually high margin products on that, right? So, okay, that's this is kind of one way that we're looking at, you know, finding these products. Okay, I want to I want to mix it up and go in a different direction really quickly, and then I want to come back to this one. So, then I can winners, right? I can continue to scroll, and I'm going to find tons of products. You guys will see this, right? Um, tons of gel nails, things like that. This can opener, interesting. But I want to ship this, and all I want to do is I want to go to video. Okay, I want to see what kind of products am I going to get now. This is going to change my product selection without a doubt. Okay, um, and it's going to make my life a little easier. So that was just a screen protector. That was there before. Um, some of these were there before, but I look at okay dash cam. Okay, before I even click this, I'm willing to bet that 80% of these sales are Russia because this is such a Russian product. Dash cams because of all the insurance fraud claims. Um, yeah. There you go. Literally insurance fraud claims like it's nothing. That's why these products sell there. They have a video though, okay? So I look at this and I go, this is definitely something I'd wanna sell, right? If I'm looking at Russia and, or within this niche and I'm just gonna click into this and I'm gonna recognize that they have a video. So the, the first thing that I would do, it won't load because we're streaming, but I'd look at this video and I'd see, is this a relevant video I can use for ads? Because if it is, boom. I just made my life so much easier, you guys. Um, understand that, okay? So you guys can continue on, and now you can look at this just from a video light, okay? But the products that I'm seeing right now, these products are sold in other countries. We see that, right? Russian Federation, United States, Brazil, Spain, New Zealand, Korea, blah, 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 blah. There's tons of markets for these products still. But, 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 we're going to notice that if I just go simply swap this for Spain, the product selection that I get, is going to be different. It's going to be a different market selection. It's going to be different product selection. Okay. So understand that. And, and this is like a way in why I created this list. Remember that why I create those lists and you guys will have it in the presets tab, but that's why, because now I can click Spain and I can do this exact same thing, except now I've got tons of new products to look at. Okay. Um, so I can find what, what are these all about? Now look at, you guys see how low some of these numbers got really quick. We got to make sure that you're not hanging in a space like that though. So I want to go and I just want to move it to the last seven days then because I don't want to look at things that have six sales and I'm using that as relevant information. It's fine if the last two days don't have sales on them. Um, the fact that the last seven have 268, that's awesome, right? It's probably yeah, a couple days orders, three days of orders there. So don't worry about that, right? That's not a, that's not a negative indicator. Um, what's this guy all about? You know, 700, 800 orders. What do we got? Russian Federation, Spain. Okay, but this product didn't come up for me before because now I'm focused on a different market. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this to go to AliExpress. Okay, I wanna see what that's all about. I still have video on, remember that. I still have video on, so if I took video off, again, I'd, I'd alleviate some of these zeros as well. They'd, it'd give me a lot more products to look at. But now I'm finding that the products that I see here are actually a, quite a different theme of products, right? Um, what is this all about? This screams happiness to me. Spain, United States, Brazil, da, 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 da. let's go to AliExpress with that one. Because what am I what am I recognizing here, right? I want you guys to start to think with me. What am I recognizing? Why did I click this product and go, this could be a great product? Because the first thing that I saw is a dog. First of all, who doesn't love dogs? Um, anything animal related, you can get viral aspects of it because you can make nice, cute content, right? That's the biggest thing, you guys. Um, that's why I love the pet niche in general, okay? Like, like if I just clear my filters quick, and I scroll down here. I'm not going to put anything else in there. And I just go like pet supplies. Okay. Let's let this load. And look at these products that come up. Okay. And, and let's take a look at what it's all about. Bow ties for your dogs. Are you kidding me? You see a video of dogs with a bunch of bow ties on? You're, you're, you're sending that to someone. Dog water bottle. I look at this image. If I look at this image, you guys, that's, that's adorable. That is absolutely adorable. I'm sending that to my mom, my girlfriend. I'm sending that to everyone instantly. They deserve to see that. They need to see that, um, right? Like that's the concept here, you guys. Um, look at this. It's a glove and they Photoshopped the Chihuahua in the background and I love it. Like it's instant, instant, instant access to being viral, okay? Uh, this is a great product, an absolutely phenomenal product. Um, I don't sell this on my store. I'm going to add this to my store tonight, legitimately. Uh, I've never seen this for dog specific and, and it's just tailored to it. This is a tracker that you put on your dog's collar and you can see where he is via GPS at all times. What? Right? Cheap. Doesn't cost me much. Um, amazing. 
Bluetooth, smartphone, tracking dog, GPS. Great. Like, like think about what you guys can do with this and how you can portray this to find success on the internet. This is a need. This is a want. This satisfies so many emotions. This evokes so many emotions because people have lost their dogs. That's their best friend. This is like, you're satisfying every aspect that you can possibly satisfy as a marketer with a product like this. This hits every single sweet spot. Um, understand that, recognize that. Okay. That's, that's kind of what we're looking for when we're selling products in those markets. Okay. Now, if I just go back to hacking winners, where's this product sold? U S will be a market. Absolutely. Chile, Russia, Israel, Poland. What? I have never seen that come up before. Never. Interesting. Spain, Colombia. Um, wow, that, that's weird. Um, I didn't know they had e-commerce. So that's that's what I'm saying to you guys. And again, I just learned something new just by looking at this database. I just found an entire new market um, for this. Okay, so great. That's awesome to see. Right? There's going to be other products like this out there, but this one's awesome. And they have a video. I wonder what the video is all about. Where is the video? Not that it'll load for me, but they have a video um, somewhere on here. Scroll past them. Uh, oh, no, I took off that filter. They don't have a video. Sorry. Um, but you guys, this is what I'm looking for, right? It's got nice, cute packaging. Uh, it's awesome. Okay. So realize that this is what I look for when I look for products. You guys, this is why some of the niches are what they are. This is why people can find the success that they can. Um, it's because they have a product that they can do something so simple with to make it marketable. Okay. Um, you know, like, 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 do I, do I even need to click this? Do I even need to click this? Like, come on. Guys, this, this is adorable. This is absolutely incredible. This is everything that if I had a cat, I'd want it to look like, okay? Yes, the cat probably doesn't like its life, okay? I get that. Maybe the hat's a little excess. Maybe the sunglasses, a little excess. But you guys get what I'm saying here. I don't sell this. I'm not going to sell that. I'm just joking. But this is something that wants to go viral. This, this cat is literally sitting here screaming at you guys, pick me. I want to go viral. I will be sold, Okay. Um, get that you guys, uh, same thing, dog leash for the dog in the car. I sell those great product, add them to your store. I don't care. They're awesome because you can make them cute. You can satisfy that need. Can you imagine if just by seeing this, I don't even have to say it to them when I market this, where's that product again? Uh, how far down did I scroll? Just by saying to someone, you show them this product. What's the first thing that goes through someone's mind? Okay. Uh, maybe it's adorable. Maybe it's probably like a typical person's reaction. Something along the lines of their thought process is going to go, oh my gosh, what if we got into an accident and Bo was in the car? Their dog was in the car. That would be horrible. Okay. What did you just do as a marketer? Yes. You're, you're playing with their sweet spot. You're playing with their heartstrings. I get that. But guess what? You're actually solving the need. No. If you play with someone's heartstrings and you're not solving the need, that's messed up. That's messed up. That's where you're crooked. That's wrong. If you do something like this and you actually satisfy the need and you actually increase safety, that's totally fine. That is fine to do. This also prevents him from jumping out the window when the car's moving. My girlfriend, if she sees this video, she'll laugh. She is petrified that her dog will jump out of the window while she drives. And to be quite frank, I would not put it past her dog. But that is why this product would succeed in that niche because that is what these consumers are talking about. The, the animal niche is the best niche in the world when it comes to virality. Okay, you guys. So understand that um, and get that. I'm just going to go and check the, the comments here, you guys. Um, but understand that. Okay. It, it's very, very, very important here. Um, da -da -da -da. Is price of the product one of your selection criteria? Uh, it's not really. It is on the lower bound. Um, I'll go into that right now. I'll write that down just so that I don't um, miss that. I want to talk price today anyways, but I just want to type price bound to address that specific question. Um, what about the language barriers when doing ads to other countries? By the way, thank you for doing this trend. No worries. Um, yeah, as I said yesterday in the, uh, in the class, the barrier is simple. We just make our ads only to English speaking um, folk, if that's what we're going for. Uh, if you guys want to speak in a different language, absolutely. And use Spanish as a good one in the US as well. That'll give you a competitive advantage. Anyone who sells, anyone who speaks Spanish here, by the way, if you do, U.S. is a great market if you um, change it to Spanish. Keep that in mind. So this is one of those toys that we saw. It's, it's definitely interesting. It's kind of cool. Uh, but again, uh, this screams trademarkable good. This is the kind of first thing I've seen that's ever a trademarkable good on Hacking Winners. 
I'm going to stay away from it. I don't think it's a good idea to do it. Um, what I'm guessing is with a product like this is, you know, who's buying this. If you guys have ever traveled, there's people who sell products on the side of the street, um, to travelers and things like that. I, I bet that this is one of those. You'll see those occasionally that'll happen. Um, it doesn't mean that there's not a market for it, but that's something to think about. Okay. So what was this all about? It's a ball that clearly has a me mechanism in it that makes it move it around. I'm guessing. Um, so price, this brings me an excellent point to price. Okay. So what would I charge for this product? Realistically, I charge, gosh, um, toy automatic ball activated. I'd love to see the video, but I can't probably 29 99. Realistically, leave me a healthy margin there. Um, pricing of products is completely up to you guys. When you price a product, I'm going to talk about this. Don't worry. I'm not just saying that as a blanket statement and avoid the conversation. No, I'm going to talk to you about this. Um, when I look at pricing a product, what I stay away from is something that I could only charge $10 for. So what's a great example of that? That embroidery stuff that we were looking at even, right? I'll just, I'll find a good example. Um, so when I look at something that is so cheap in price, this I could charge $9.99 for. Would I use this as an ad driver? This is a bow tie, I believe, for a dog. Yeah. Would I use this as an ad driver? No. I'd use this as an upsell. Someone would pay for it, and I'd make my $9.90 profit um, for $10 upsell if I had a dog store. But I would never use that as a lead magnet because it's simply put, I'm not going to make enough money when I pay 20 bucks for an ad if I do, or even $5 for an ad. There's nothing left there for me, right? So keep that in mind. Um, upsells are a, a tremendous way for us to increase this basket size. You want products like that for an upsize, okay? But if I just go to the presets here and I go high margin products, this is the opposite end of that spectrum, okay, guys? And you guys can adjust the countries here however you please. This is the opposite end of that spectrum. Now, these are more expensive products um, that I can price even higher. So these ones will cost up to 30 bucks depending on the model. I don't know what this is. Um, aluminum laptop holder. You could charge $99 for this at least, right? I do a lot of high ticket sales, high ticket products because you only need one conversion in there for you know a big ad spend. This is something you could easily charge 99 bucks, 129 US even. People would pay for it. It's a great product. I mean, clearly it, it, it's got a good design. It's neat. It's intricate. The more you charge for this, the higher quality that the consumer is going to perceive. So that's where I want to take this tangent into price really, really quickly. I'm going to put this on the screen. Um, tangent alert price. Why is it not showing? Ah, there we go. Tangent alert price. Okay. This is going to be um, a, a definitely a, a, a different topic for you guys to understand. Now, people price things very funny. I'm going to start off by giving you guys an example, and then I'm going to tell you the whys. My example that I've told a lot of people about before is I used to sell these silicone dog bowls. Okay, they folded up to nothing. Um, they basically folded flat, and then you could pull them out of your purse, and you'd have a big dog bowl for your dog to drink or eat out of while you're on a walk, okay? Sold these things for $14.99. My conversion rate was absolutely garbage. It was horrible. It was a brutal conversion rate, and I couldn't figure out why. I was one of the first sellers of this product. It was probably in 2013. Um, I was doing awesome, and, and I, I didn't make sense to me. I'm like, this is a no-brainer product for me. This product looks amazing. It should be selling, but it wasn't. Why is that? Well, I realized as soon as I raised the price to $24.99 for a product that cost me about a dollar to two dollars, keep that in mind, huge margin. Then I started getting conversions. Why is that? Well, simply put, it's actually a product of perception. So in this case of the dog bowl, what it was is people assumed at a lower price that it was un it was harmful for their dog, silicone in it, right? That was harmful. I did make sure that the thing was good. I'm actually a big animal lover, so didn't have any harmful products in it. But when I raised the price up to 24, 29, around that range, I got higher conversions because now a consumer that never even crossed their mind because the price made sense. That's what they would pay for something that is high quality. So when we see these people do free plus shipping and all that jazz, it doesn't work because it makes no sense. You're sitting there as a consumer and you're going, what, what in the, what is happening, right? doesn't make sense. It used to it. It did for like a, a couple months. People crushed it and made a ton of email marketing campaigns and things like that. But understand that you're pricing your products for perception. Let's price these three products. What am I looking at here? This number is doesn't matter to me. The only thing that I look about at this number is I go, oh, I got to show my screen here. The only thing I look at um, da -da -da -da, with this number 
is do I have margin left? Yes or no? I'm like, yep, absolutely going to sell this for more than $50. So that's out of the equation. Now let's look at what kind of value does this provide me? Well, I look at office supplies and I go, that's a very, very nice setup. That looks great. Okay. It's a good setup. Cool setup. Uh, cool. I mean, I'm not going to show ads like that. Probably going to focus on the desktop ones. But how much value does this provide someone with you guys? This looks amazing. Look at this. Look at this picture. Okay. This picture is a great example. If I put this picture up on my page and I charge $29.99 for this, would you buy it? No chance you would because you're going to say, yeah, right, that's aluminum. For $29.99, there's no chance that that's aluminum. That's, that's a hard plastic. It's going to shatter. It's going to be junk. It's not going to open. It's not going to show up. Blah, 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 blah. You lose consumers. It's fascinating. Even at $50, you're going to say that's junk. If I charge $130 for this product, I can guarantee you my conversion rate will be better and I'll make way more money. Rob, conversion rate might be the same even, but whatever, regardless. Way more money in the table for me. Way more money left there because I'm charging a number that makes sense to the customer. I'm choosing a value of quality and I'm telling them this is what it's worth. Does this make sense to you? And they go, yes, this makes sense to me. And then they go, am I willing to spend that much money? That's the question to them now, right? Um, but look, you got like, give me a break, right? So if anyone's disagreeing with me right now, please leave in the comments. I'll come by and I'll check it out. Um, but guys, that's, that's a no brainer to me. That's a $130 product. This one. Okay. Um, low quality product without a doubt. It looks very low quality. So you're not going to be able to sell this for as high as I initially thought I could box brings it up. Definitely. Um, see like this guy's going to shred that thing in a second. This guy's going to have a good time with that thing for a week, right? That's, that's my thought process here. You know, probably in hindsight going $19.99, maybe that $24.99 range still might not even be a good traffic gen unless I can get an upsell in there. Um, but yeah, $24.99, I think you still could. I'd like to see the video of it. Oh, they loaded an eighth of it. Oh. Um. Oh, the ball does move. Okay. Okay. See, like, guys, this is a video right here. You have content right here. I would edit this. I wouldn't leave it the way they left it. I'd start with something like this, like playful, cute, adorable. Text your mom, text your dad, text your girlfriend, text your boyfriend. I want this dog is what you're going through your head. That's what you guys should be looking at, okay? Uh, not a great product. Honestly, I wouldn't sell this on my store because it is lower quality um, because my store has a brand to it. So I'm not going to add this one. Um, but, you know, it's definitely definitely something. You guys could add this. If you guys don't have a branded store that you've built a customer retention base, you could. It kind of looks cheap to me. Maybe you could find an alternative, right? At the end of the day, if I don't go with this supplier, that's fine. I can find an alternative similar product and I can sell to these exact same countries, um, right? Like, us maldives uh, things like that it's definitely a, a market there right so okay that's that's one two sorry um what would i sell this product to this is the other thing is what does this work to someone right how high quality is this this one's this one's decent um it's a cheaper end without a doubt i look at that switch it's definitely a cheaper end 29.99 people would still pay that for a bluetooth selfie stick like it's it's always a value proposition if you frame it appropriately, if you put this image on your Shopify product page and you try to charge $29.99, people will laugh at you. People will. I will laugh at you. Um, I will. This can't be up there. Excuse I have the hiccups. This is the worst thing in the world, doing it live and I have the hiccups. Um, you can't have images like that on there, you guys. If you're trying to charge a high price, it's got to be sustained throughout the whole product page. Understand that, okay? Um Okay, what is this guy all about? We didn't even cover this yet. Uh, debt repair tool. I think I get the gist of it. Um, okay, okay, okay. Is there a video? Video would really help me here. It's going to be tough to make that sales pitch with that. Maybe that image does it. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't see a video. They've got very high def, high quality images though. This is a cheap product from a price standpoint. $19.99. $24.99 easily. Um, you know, even you could even probably go higher. Kid you not. 
The reason is, is what is the value that you're providing someone with? That's the question. It's not what is the good cost. The question is what the value is. This is going to take a dent out of someone's car. That take that costs a ton of money, you guys. Um, you're selling this in Russia. There's dents everywhere in cars in Russia. You can probably get away with a higher price point on this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'm not going to say that I have a set price for this. If I'm launching this product in my store, I'm testing twenty four ninety nine. And I'm testing $39.99. That's probably my range. Um, if I can get sales at $39.99, I'll probably increase it to $49.99. I don't know. But that's where I'm putting my ranges. Normally, I have like a pretty good spec on it. This one's a little tougher for me to gauge. Okay. So please leave your questions. You guys have any questions about pricing right now? Can I kind of can I could kind of go back to my tangent about products, or do you guys want more um, examples of that? Just just let me know. Um, perceived value, exactly. That's that's what's most important. Uh, do you still use tag or share in your Facebook ads? Example, tag a friend who needs this. You can't really do that anymore. Facebook gets mad at you and um, they basically, they just show your ad to less people. If you say something like that, if you have it actually in the audio of the video, you can get away with it sometimes. But as of right now, it's tough. Uh, you're going to have some troubles there. So someone, you guys in the comments, just let me know if you guys want me to move on or do some more product pricing examples. I'm easy. I'm good with whatever you guys want. This is where I want engagement, okay? Um, you guys let me know because at the end of the day, this is your guys' class. Uh, but just remember stress, pricing, perception. It's all that matters, okay? Don't think about cost. You're the only one that knows that cost. When you go to the dealership and you get a car, this is the best example, you have no idea how badly they are hosing you when you buy a car. You'll buy a $50,000 vehicle or it'll be listed at $50,000. You'll offer them $40,000. They will sit there laughing behind the desk because they're like, we're going to make five grand on this if we don't barter an inch. Then they say, manager said we can't go down to 40,000. We need 45,000, split it in the middle. It's the lowest, absolute lowest we can go. You go, wow, I just hosed them for $5,000. This is amazing. They're sitting on the other side of that going, this sucker has no idea that we just made $10,000 on him. Okay? That's how pricing works. It's all a perception. As long as you can justify that perception, you'll be able to get conversions with your traffic, okay? Um, that's, that's one of the biggest things. You mentioned you would test one product with two different prices. Would you set up two different product pages um, and test it with the different ads, or would you just change the price point? So I would all leave it on one page. I'd leave the audience the same, and I would test just waiting to get sales. So I maybe go for 50 website visitors to that page or a hundred website visitors to that page. And I look, if I don't get any sales, I'll swap the price. If I don't get any sales at a hundred um, uh, page visitors, that's weird, right? It's kind of foreign for me. So then I'll swap that price out. Even if I do get sales at that first hundred visitors, then I'll swap the price out still and I'll compare them. So all one product page um, and I'm leaving the ad the same. I'm not even turning off the ad. I'm not changing the ad because as soon as I turn off or change that ad, it's going to re-optimize. We'll get into that a little bit more in the, in the later classes here, but that's the, the concept. Do you use multiple stores to test products or a general type of store? So good question. I have tons of stores um, right now. So I've got a few general stores. I've got a few niche specific stores. The one that I'm public about is my animal niche one. That's what I build a lot of my platforms around. Um, the other ones are very specific. I don't discuss them too much. Uh, yeah, I've got a few general stores. That's where I'd sell things like this. I've got an animal store that I'd sell um, pet supplies on. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's, is there a right answer or a wrong answer? I'm sure that's the right question. The next question coming up, general store, or specific niche store, <sighs> right answer, wrong answer. No, um, it's more on you. If mentally you can handle dealing with five different niches, you can mentally. Most people can't don't, don't, get mad at me for saying that, but mentally most people can, right? Um, my first stores were niche. I always started niche. Uh, fitness was my biggest one at the beginning. I understood the niche. I crushed the niche. Then I branched out to other aspects of fitness because fitness is a massive niche. Then I did general stores and animal stores. Um, so for beginners, you guys, it's not the right or wrong answer. It's better to focus on a niche that makes more sense to you, I would say. Um, but don't think that there's a right or a wrong answer there. Okay. So um, let's jump right back into this. I want to do a bit more examples on the choosing winning products here for you guys. So this is kind of going to go in hand in hand with your homework, okay? 
Um, so this is kind of like the homework segment that I want to go to here. This is exactly what you guys are going to be doing, okay? So I'm going to go through hacking winners. I'm going to clear the filters. I don't know what's in there right now, okay? Um, high margin products is actually a great place to hang out in. You guys can actually do this. Um, I guess I'll just go on a little tangent quick. Russia. Russia. Bring it down a bit. Somewhere like 15. Um, this is actually a great little tangent for you guys. High ticket items are awesome. Um, they definitely, definitely are. So whenever you have something that, that generally costs above $10, $20 on AliExpress, that means it's usually around that $100 product. So keep that in mind. Um, the, I've got this just a little high, I think, right? Because so I've got low orders on the, the right-hand side there. Could be because I had the filter set to one day. Um, but yeah, they're definitely awesome products to sell you guys. And I, I definitely hang around here, right? Um, oh, I actually do know a lot about this product. And I know somebody sells these for $220. Um, they're, they're like a Netflix Wi-Fi box kind of concept. Goggles, great product. Um, they look awesome, right? You could definitely sell these. That's awesome. Where are they sold? Russia, because they're snowboarding. United States, Netherlands, blah, 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 right? Like that's a product that 31 bucks, you could probably charge... 130 140 dollars for a good pair of goggles anti-fog goggles realistically um and if they're 30 dollars and they have a 4.9 they're going to be very good quality keep that in mind um but you'll find a lot of very cool products in here you guys you really really will um there's some some amazing products that that are high ticket items here so check that out that, that's kind of my tangent um i don't want to go into that too too much i just want to keep everything simple allow you guys to have the tools to find what you guys want to find so Go through the system. Okay, it's your homework. Go through the system. Look at the countries that you wrote down. Okay, um, start to look at those countries. Like if I go to uh, uh, France, go to these countries. Okay, um, start to analyze things. Start to mark products that you think are good products. Okay, um, ask each other questions in this group. So if I see something, I'm in France now. I see something, and I'm like, that's a great product. I'm gonna favorite that. I'm going to send the group the link and say, what do you guys think of this? Is this a need or a want? Am I completely off topic? Okay. Utilize each other, you guys. I'm not going to have time to comment on every one of yours. I'm sorry. I'll try when I can. But you guys are in this group together. This should be like a community that you guys push each other all to succeed. So try to find those products that you think are, are very, very good um, for you to push, right? France is a big beauty uh, aspect there. There's a huge beauty aspect. So you guys will definitely be able to find a lot more beauty products if you guys wanted to focus on a country like France. Okay. Um, and there's a lot more of these kind of products. Uh, the, the pride products, right? United States, France is huge for pride products. Huge, huge, huge. Australia is a big one there too. Right. But go through this favorite, these products and maybe attach a price to it. If you guys have problems with pricing, do that as well. So I put this product in there and I say, Hey, what do you guys think of this product? I'm thinking pricing it at 1999 or 2499. Um, get some feedback from each other. The thing is, is yes, I get a lot of you guys are going to be like sitting here going, well, oh my gosh, I wasn't showing my screen. Ah, okay. I suck. I suck. Um, uh, let's do that again. So all I did, if that was for so long, I'm sorry, guys. Um, I did high margin products and then I went to Russia and then I looked through some of those products. Okay. That was the first thing I was talking about there, right? Like this guy, high margin products. Awesome. Um, then I went and I went to countries and I went to France. So you guys can listen to that audio again on the replay if you'd like. Oh, sorry guys. So bad. For that. So bad. Now that product I was going to show you guys isn't going to be there. I bet. Cause I don't remember what percentage I had on it. This is a downward spiral. Um, <laughs> but France, if you're looking for beauty products when it comes to clothing, definitely a good one. Pride products. Awesome as well. Um, where is that product? I want to show you guys this. It was awesome. There we go. Um, this is an awesome product, right? So I put this in the group and I'd say, hey guys, this is the link. I'm looking at charging $19.99 for these. Um, I definitely think it's a, a want. Like I think this could go viral. I think people would really tag their friends in this. It's awesome, right? Um, the other thing that stands out to me an insane amount, you guys, is these wish lists, okay? That's huge, 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 huge. That preset filter for unpopular with big potential, it's looking at metrics like that. It's looking at the ratio of orders, to um, wish list, the things like that. So that means we can, this is where you can catch a lot of products very, very early in their stages of life, okay? So it's definitely somewhere that I like to hang out. 
um, because of this. They're all very, very high wish list, very low orders, okay? So check that out. Hang out here. Look at it. Take it seriously. It's a very good place to be, okay? So do this for your homework. Save these products. Put them in the group. Um, interact with each other. Start to help each other out, okay? Feed ideas to each other. Look it. At the end of the day, this market is ginormous. I'm showing you guys literally some of the things that I sell. I'm not concerned about your competition. Your competition is not going to influence if I make money or not. I'm sorry to say it like that. It will not. The market is ginormous, okay? Absolutely ginormous. Um, wow, I got a lot of comments about sharing your screen. Sorry about that, guys. Um, can you tell us the difference between the column categories again? Yesterday, okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's go take a look at that really quick. Um, so within here, this is based off of yesterday's sales, okay? This is based off the last three days sales, last seven days sales, last 30 days sales. So this is gonna be the products that, that strived in that market. I'll just clear these filters because I've got weird filters on there. Um, this is gonna be the products that strive there within our AI system is relevant, okay? Generally speaking, they asked yesterday that data might be delayed. I always go last three days sales. That's gonna give me a much better idea of products that are doing well on AliExpress. Um, so in the last three days, they did 103 orders, but this purple box, okay, this purple box correlates to this box here. In the last three days, it had a 25% decline in sales compared to the three days before it, okay? So if I went last three days percentage, now I'm gonna be seeing the difference in sales from the previous three days to the three days before. Problem is you get things like this happening, where it only sold one, but it had sold zero before that. So you guys can simply increase that minimum in orders so that you can find this, okay? So if I just raise this up to something ridiculous, I don't even know if this is gonna show any products it's so high. This will give you guys an insight on it, right? So 100%, 100%. Um, this will give you guys a better idea of the percentage plays here, okay? So that's kind of how those, those filters work. Generally speaking, I just look at the, um, this is the only one that I us usually use. Um, very rarely am I looking at other things. It's, it's usually the end all be all. It's usually very good for me to look at, okay? Um, let me take a look. I saw another couple comments here. If a product has high wish list and low orders, what does it say about the product? It says that, that it's an emerging, there's a lot of want for it, but people aren't pulling the trigger yet. So this can sometimes reflect to a seasonality index. At the end of the day, it means high potential, but it's kind of like a crab shoe. Like, could it pan out? Could it not pan out? Um, a lot of the times, if I can correlate it to a seasonality index, I'll sell the products. What do I mean by that? If it's like a fitness related product and it's November and it's got high potential and it's coming up there for a lot of wish list orders, I'm going to pay attention to that, add that to my store because November means December fitness trends coming around. There's going to be sales there, all right? Because I can correlate that one. Let's say that it was high wish list than it was in the animal niche where there's not as much cyclicality. Maybe I might look at that and go, that's a little weird. Try to figure out a reason why. Do a small sample test with it, right? Small sample test. It's coming up for high pro or high potential products. There's definitely very, very good chance that it pans out. Um, the AI system is, is monitoring those to a T. It's looking for a lot of benefits, quali qualitative benefits, sorry, um, that we can't really read into too much. So it does have reasons for those products being there. The AI system excludes a lot of products. So there are products on AliExpress that have tons of sales yesterday, but our AI system doesn't think that they're relevant. They don't come up. Um, and so keep that in mind, you guys utilize that AI system. It's very, very intelligent. And if it doesn't have a good indicator of the, the future success of that product, it won't usually look at it. So keep that in mind. Um, but that being said, you guys, that's your homework. I want you guys to go through here. I want you guys to look at that and take that seriously. I want you guys to start to analyze what products you guys want to sell. Then when you guys do this, go back and write down those countries again. Now I've got products. I started with Russia. I've got that product, got that dog, that dog leash, let's say. Now I look at the countries that it's correlated to, like Spain, and I go, okay, now that's my market for that product. I jot that down. Great. Looks good. Move on. Okay. That's what I need you guys to do. You guys need to be doing the same thing there. Okay. So closing notes, questions. Does anyone have any questions while I, while I chat here on my little closing tangent as per usual? Um, I just wanted to talk today just a little bit about getting into this. Now, some of you guys have stores. Some of you guys don't have stores. At the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. Okay. I want you guys to consider pulling the trigger tomorrow. I'm going to be doing this. Okay. Um, I'm just double checking the agenda for tomorrow before I lie and say something that I shouldn't. Um, da, 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 da. I gotta scroll ways. 
So tomorrow is detailed product research. Data is king. Um, that's going to be mostly getting my product action out of my store. So we covered a lot more than I thought we'd cover. I thought there was going to be more questions with it. So tomorrow is actually going to be getting my store ready. That was going to be kind of the, the small topic of tomorrow, but it's going to be the main topic of getting a product page together, things like that. I'm just going to do a single variant, single product store for this um, to keep things isolated and very simple for you. Okay. But keep that in mind. So you guys know that moving forward um, and what to expect. Okay, guys. So be prepared for that mentally tomorrow. It's a lot. If you guys don't have a store or you guys have a store, Understand that it's not that hard to implement. I'm going to do a bit of work outside of the um, the live because it's going to take me a bit of time. But understand that, okay? It's, it's going to be important for you guys to understand and realize that it's not hard. I just have to do it and I have to start pushing at it. doesn't matter if you're techie or not. It's, uh, it's good. Um, I see a couple of questions here um, about the giveaway. Yeah, so the giveaway ended. Um, the winners have been contacted via email. Um, I'm hoping to get them on a live so that I can kind of present them in front of you guys. You know, generally speaking, people aren't a fan of that. So I got to convince some people, but yeah, it's, it's in your email. I believe that they've all responded now. I might be wrong on that. I'll have to check with my staff. Um, but yeah, giveaway is going to be announced. It's done. The winners know that they're the winners at the end of the day. Um, so if you don't know, I apologize. You did not win. I sorry, but, um, Okay, .com versus .com, .au. Uh, .com is always king. .com period is the best. Um, doesn't matter where you are in the world, .com is the best, unless you're into AI and apps. It's a different world. Um, but yeah, e-commerce wise, it's the best. So do that. But that's where I'm going to leave it today, you guys. There is a link above this video for you guys to go and uh, click and get the message updates from me. You guys should be getting updates from me via messenger saying, hey, about to go live or blah, 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 blah or if I have to cancel one or something crazy happens. Um, but yeah, so check it out there, you guys. I'm excited for this tomorrow uh, to get us into building stores and getting us launching products and maybe even getting some ads out there for the next day. It's going to be exciting stuff, you guys. It's awesome. It's a new time, new year. I'm excited to do this with you guys. So I'll chat with you tomorrow. Bye.